guest. Pretty depressing. <laughs> Sorry, continue. Good flop. Over. Summer. Summer. All right. So now you get to be stressed. Stress I want to read this book because it feels like dolphin skin. <laughs> Are you okay? I'm good. I'm good. But, uh. <laughs> I can't with you. <laughs> it's another thick one. But. I like the cover. I want to send you into a dark place. I mean, I am, but. <laughs> hey everyone, what's up? Welcome to my channel. Today we have a guest, a returning guest. If you're new here, this is my boyfriend Cooper. Hello. He was very kind to do a video with me a few months ago where he chose my kind of TBR. You chose three books for mm -hmm. me to read and then I but got back to you. from Barnes & Noble. From Barnes & Noble, yeah. we bought them. This time he is choosing my November TBR. A books you already have in your giant stack. I already own a bunch of books. <laughs> <laughs> I have a problem. I brought a bunch of books for him to choose from that I already own. He is going to choose seven books. We're rounding it out to an even eight because I am going to be reading this book. I have an event coming up in early December with Jodi Thomas. I'm going to be interacting with her quite a bit. So I really wanted to read this book and kind of just know what she's about and like what her writing is like. This has really good reviews on Goodreads. So I'm really excited to check it out. It's called Just Down the Road. Doesn't it look so cute and wholesome? <laughs> <Look> <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're gonna show you the books that I brought and give like a quick rundown of them and then Cooper's got some choosing to do. Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's do it. So the first book, oops, not this way. The School for Good Mothers by Jessamine Chen. I think it's one of those uncomfortable books where the mom has a really bad day, she's kind of neglectful of her daughter, mm -hmm. and then there's this organization that finds bad mothers and sends them to the school to be a good mother. Cover looks pretty depressing. <laughs> Ominous. The texture is not my favorite. What? I don't like it. I like, the, I like when covers have texture like that. And I like when covers are matte like that. The next one we've got is A River Enchanted. <gasps> so this one's, oh, sorry, continue. Good flop. <laughs> it's so satisfying. This is A River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross. I hear that it's fantasy, a little bit of mythology. It's young adult. Looks like it. I know that her most recent book, Divine Rivals, exploded. So everyone's reading her backlist and is like, this is so good. That's all I really know. Looks cute. It's floppy. I love this cover. It's beautiful. Like a stream. You gotta cover your face. It oh. likes your face. Then we have Radiant Sin, <gasps> which is unspeakably hot according to Entertainment Weekly. This is the Greek mythology kind of, I wouldn't say retelling, but a reimagining. Remember the neon gods, the ones with the, that's the one with the Hades and Persephone stage that oh, I told you about. cool, yeah. So this is that series. Very nice. But it's the fourth one in and the And it's series. in modern. Yeah, it's like modern. modern. Okay, all right. That's a spicy, spicy book. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the Inheritance Games, you've talked about this one. Yeah, so this is The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This series is kind of a mystery young adult series where this one random girl suddenly inherits this like billion dollar fortune and mansion from this random man she doesn't know but a stipulation is that she has to go live in that house with mm -hmm. the family and there's like three brothers and some of them are like what's going on they don't trust her yeah and it's kind of like a puzzle house there are like okay. hidden passageways and stuff like that. I've heard good things. This is already gonna be a maybe. As old as time, which looks like a retelling of Beauty and the Beast. Hide your faces. Hide your face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm new to this. You're doing your best, babe. You're doing great. <laughs> You're doing your great. But yeah, retelling of Beauty and the Beast mm -hmm. is what it looks like, uh, which I love like all the retelling of Brothers mm -hmm. Grimm. It's part of the Twisted Tale series okay. where they rewrite the original like Disney stories, but with a twist. So this twist is, what if Belle's mother cursed the beast? How would that change the story? I thought it was kind of like a folly looking read, right? Yeah, for sure. Happy Place, this looks summery. By Emily Henry. It's 
a story about two people who are best friends, boyfriend and girlfriend, and then something happens, they break up, but someone's getting married or there's like a reunion and they don't want their friends to know, so they pretend to date still mm -hmm. while they go to this reunion and get together okay. with their friends. Oh yeah, I remember you telling me about this one. Sounds good, it looks summery. I'm done with summer though. <laughs> Can we're summer. over. Summer. summer. <laughs> he was so excited to wear his flannel today. <laughs> Okay, Legends and Lattes, which I see yeah. all over the place. I love this cover. It's very possible this one ends up in there. I don't even know much about it, but I see it everywhere. And it you've says, had it for a while. It says, a novel of high fantasy and low stakes. Basically, this orc is a mercenary. Mm -hmm. And she just gets tired of it. And is like, I want to live a chill life now. And so she opens the first coffee shop in this like intergalactic society. And that's what the story's about. Cool. The Electric Kingdom. By David Arnold. Look at this cover. Isn't that so fun? This cover really drew me in and then I read the synopsis and I love it. Mm -hmm. So this is science fiction but also kind of dystopian. It says a deadly fly flu sweeps the globe. This random collection of survivors kind of interact and intersect with each other. I do like the cover a lot. I'm liking a lot of these. <laughs> I know. This is my problem. So many, I have so many good books and I want to read all of them. And then I get stressed trying to choose. So now you get to be stressed. Stress over that. <laughs> That's low stakes for me at least. You know, I'm not committing to them. That's true. Yeah. Pestilence. Next we have Pestilence by Laura Thalassa. Thalassa? This is the one I was telling you about where there's the four horsemen and they come to earth to like destroy it mm -hmm. and then they all meet a human that possibly changes their mind. I've heard this is also really spicy. It's good enough. <laughs> Don't give me that look. <laughs> Do you remember this is the one that I told you I really wanted to read but I wanted to wait to buy it because they got new covers? Yes. And this okay, is yeah, the new cover. We saw it at Target. Yeah. 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 I yeah. really like the new covers. They're gorgeous. And then when all of the spines are lined up together, it's just so satisfying. Yeah. I like the idea of the apocalyptic part to it. It sounds mm -hmm. fun. Wait a fucking moment. What? Oh, it actually says that. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? Like, right there. And then next we have Hooked, which when Elise first told me about this series or these retellings, mm -hmm. I'm a sucker for the retellings, I think and with how dark they apparently are. Mm -hmm. I think this one's probably gonna end up on there. This is one of those series that's known mm -hmm. for very morally gray characters. Mm -hmm. It's like the villain is the main character. Yeah. Can you guess who it is? Hook? I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> Come on. I'm just, I'm looking out for you, babe. This one speaks out to me because it's so different from the rest. Um, so this is The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. It's a classic. It's a classic. It's Oscar Wilde, a great Irish poet, so... I've been wanting to read knows. this book for a while. I tried to find it in the resale stores, you know, because I thrift books a lot. Couldn't find it anywhere. So that's either a really good sign that it's a good book or a really bad sign that people just throw it away or don't buy it. <laughs> So I finally found a cover that I'm like okay with. How does that texture? I love this texture. It's very like, it's almost like a velvety... It's like dolphin skin. <laughs> Have you ever pet a dolphin? Yeah, but I don't remember what it feels like. Similar to this. <laughs> <laughs> I want to read this book because it feels like dolphin skin. <laughs> <laughs> I killed her. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, we're back. As collected as can be. <laughs> it's okay. not saying a lot. <laughs> Next we have Wings of Fire. It looks like a easy read. It's small. This is the eighth book in the series. So it's following a dragon named Peril. Mm -hmm. That's Peril. 
Escaping Peril. I just haven't picked up that series in a while, so I was like, oh, that would be kind of fun to pick up again, so I just put that as an option. Is it the last in the series, or? No, there are 14 books in the series. Holy. So, about halfway. Okay. He looks devious. It's a she. She looks <laughs> devious. I'm sorry, Peril. I feel like the name Peril could go both ways. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Kiss Quotient. Is this another stem girly yeah romance. it is you know how i'm in a mil middle of a million series mm -hmm. this is one of the series that i'm in the middle of and this is the last book that i need to read to oh, complete okay. it yeah so i was like oh i could probably pick up a few books from a series that i need to complete mm -hmm. the kiss quotient by helen hong follows stella she is a statistician i believe this line gets me. It doesn't help that Stella has Asperger's or that French kissing reminds her of a shark getting its teeth cleaned by a pilot fish. So she has to like get over it and she like yeah. practices mm -hmm. with another guy. So it's just like a cutesy mm -hmm. romance. Okay, it'll be good. You need to complete your series. Don't call me out. Ooh, Christmassy. Love Light Farms. We've got some mistletoe on the front. Christmas tree scent. Hang a car, car scent? No, hanger? it's mistletoe, babe. No, this in here. Oh, yeah, you're right. Is that an air freshener? Maybe. Oh, I bet you it's like a two from <clears throat> present. Oh, yeah. All I know is that this BK Borison was an indie author. A lot of my friends have read this book, and it takes place at a Christmas tree farm. I think this one might be enemies to lovers. Oh, no, it's fake boyfriend. It's fake dating. Okay. Got Fake it. dating, small town, romance, Christmas novel. Do the flop. That's solid. I like that. I guess it's inherently not solid, but. <laughs> it's just flexible. It's flexible. It's yeah. solid, still solid. Flexible. Yeah. Ooh. Children of Blood and Bone. This one looks fun. It's got maybe a Romani woman on the front. Uh, so this is young adult fantasy. Cool. They killed my mother. They took our magic. They tried to bury us. Now we rise. It sounds fun. This has been recommended to me by four or five different people. Mm. I <clears> love <throat> fantasy books that map out the world that they're in. So this one has that in front. That always draws me in. I love going back and referencing that whenever they bring up a new place. I'm doing that a lot with magicians right now. Oh yeah, yeah they've got Cooper's that. in the middle of reading The Magicians, the first mm -hmm. book in the series. Yep. There's one, I've been waiting for you to read uh, The Mountain and the Sea, just because the cover is awesome. It's so cool. It's so cool looking. So this is a science fiction novel, and these marine biologists discover this, um, mm -hmm. Sorry. He just saw the, the, the edges. <laughs> so this marine biologist discovers an island where uh, cephalopods, octopus, octopi that are intelligent and have their own, like, culture and language. That's pretty cool. This one organization wants to seize the octopuses for themselves, but no one has yet asked the octopuses what they think. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> oh fun. yeah, get it, octopi. Okay, here you go. All right. All right, that one's definitely going in the... The maybe pile. In the maybe pile. Definitely maybe. King of Scars, this is another one that I noticed earlier has a nice flop to it. King of Scars. Tell me about this one. So this is part of the Grisha verse by Lee Bardugo. I read the first series in the Six of Crows duology. Mm -hmm. This is kind of a continuation, but like um, a spinoff of some of the other characters. So this is the first of the next duology spinoff. Okay. Following Nikolai. This is the edition that Barnes & Noble had. They had like no other options for editions, but I'm kind of not mad about it. Like the metallic front of it or what? Well, it's like green. It's The other mm -hmm. editions aren't green and gold like this. It's going in the yes, maybe pile for the flop. I don't know yet. So while Cooper has been looking through and learning more about the books, he separated them into two piles. Do you want to show them the no pile? <laughs> the no pile is Officially not very big. No. The official no pile is not very big. I wasn't thinking Christmas just yet. But maybe it's November. It. I know. I feel like Christmas has to start after Thanksgiving and you would probably read it before Thanksgiving. You're not wrong. Wings of Fire? I don't have anything against it. It just wasn't, didn't call out to me. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Sorry, Peril. I'm done with summer. So, no happy place. <laughs> what? That sounded worse. Opposite of that. This one just seemed too depressing. So. <laughs> 
said no happy place. I know. Thing, but too depressing. But too depressing. <laughs> okay, babe, let's choose some okay. of these. So the cool. rest of them are on his maybe pile, which means most of yep. them are on his maybe pile. I'll let you choose eight. We'll just choose eight anyway. Eight? Okay. So I'm going to go with ones that really spoke out to me that I knew right away were going to be yeah. yeses when I saw them in the pile. These ones I'm choosing mostly because of how familiar I am with their covers and seeing them all over the place and constantly seeing them. Legends and Lattes and um, The Mountain in the Sea. I think the covers have a lot to do with why I'm choosing these ones. And the stories sound pretty cool too. I'm ready to hear more about them from you. I'm really excited to read them. I just haven't bit the bullet yet. Okay, what's next? I'm gonna choose a retelling, but I think mm. I might go with just one because two retellings of Disney. Yeah, but might they're be a lot. different. They, they're, I mean, yeah, they're very different, but. Peter Pan and yeah. Beauty and the Beast. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go with one of them. Okay. I think I'm gonna go with Hooked. I knew it. Yeah, I'm feeling dark. Um, <laughs> he said, not happy, but not too <laughs> depressing, but dark. Are you okay? I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Okay, that's three. <laughs> Next. Let's see. Okay. This one is just very different from the rest. I'm so excited to read this one. Good. I'm probably going to steal it after you're done yeah, with it. Yeah, of course. Um, mostly for the dolphin skin. But... Uh, <laughs> I can't with you. <laughs> pictures of Dorian Gray. Yay! Okay, four more. I'm just going to look at what we've got and I want to try and diversify a little bit. Let's go with the Electric Kingdom. Get a little bit of sci-fi in there. He said those thick boys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna find the biggest ones I can. <laughs> yeah, I love the cover to this. So um, pretty. I wanna know what's up with the dog. I love when covers tell a story. Like you can find elements of a story in the cover and mm -hmm. this cover really tells a story. And she's got a sick backpack. I like that. <laughs> oh, Cooper likes camping and hiking. There we go, we've got five. Uh, next, it's another thick one, but I like the cover. Yeah, the cover is stunning. Yeah, I just think she's very intriguing. They killed my mother, they took our magic, they tried to bury us, now we rise. So, a little now bit of vengeance. Rise. Sounds exciting, sounds fun. Let's do it. Let's do it. Six. You mean I'm gonna do it? You're, you're gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, babe. You Two got more. this. <laughs> Let's go with Radiant Sin. I guess it's another retelling, but it's not Disney. It's Greek mythology. Greek mythology. And I'm a sucker for Greek mythology. Me too. It says, Apollo, keeper of secrets, master of his shining realm, and the only man I am powerless to deny. Mm. Mm. One more. That's a tough one. Uh, we got a lot of dark stuff. So... <laughs> there was literally a book called Happy Place and a Christmas book, but you said no. <laughs> and now you're worried about it being too dark. Well, I mean, I don't want to send you into a dark place. I mean, I am, but... So I'm just taking that into consideration. Something a little lighter. Uh-huh. Let's, <laughs> let's do the kissing quotient. The Some kiss romance. Quotient. Kiss quotient, yes. Okay, so the ones that are also going to be a no are King of Scars, Tale as Old as Time, Pestilence is a no. I'm a little bummed about that one, babe. I forgot about that one. <clears throat> the Inheritance Games is a no. I'll have to wait until next time. And same with A River Enchanted. So let's show them the final eight. First, we have The Kiss Quotient by Helen Hong, of Radiant Sun, which is the fourth book in the Dark Olympus series by Katie Robert. Then we have a little sci fi with The Electric Kingdom by David Arnold. Then we have some classic with The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. Then we have Hooked by Emily McIntyre, which is a Captain Hook dark romance retelling. Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. Good vibes. Then we have The Mountain and the Sea by Ray Naylor. I'm actually really super excited to read this one. I'm excited. And last but not least, we have Children of Blood and Bone by Tommy Adeyemi. And then on top of that, I guess I have one other happy book. Yeah. And that is Just Down the Road by Jody Thomas, which I added in there myself. How many <laughs> of these do you think I'm actually going to read? I think you're going to get through six. Okay, I was going to say five, 
but yeah. six is good. We'll see. Come back and find out. Thanks, Cooper. You're welcome. What do you think you're gonna start with? <sighs> Gosh, probably a spicy dark romance because I have not had enough spice in my life lately. Like, I was looking at the books that I've been reading. <laughs> Looking at the books that I've been reading, and they haven't been that spicy, so probably when a, probably Radiant Center hooked. Although the kiss question is a little bit spicy too. Okay, everyone, thank you so much for watching. Give Cooper some love in the comments, and thank you so much for watching. Yep. And see you in the next one. Bye, everyone. This is my good sign. Both sides are great signs. Good answer. <laughs> We're gonna kiss my nose. I was going to. They don't want to see our sappiness. Huh? You look uncomfy. A little bit. Yoga instructor. <laughs> You're new here. Hi. Oh, that was so awkward. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Welcome to my channel. Mm, that was so fake. A little bit. Uh, <laughs> what's up, everyone? Uh, no, okay. <laughs> I think I'm gonna start organizing these and like potentials to probably not. Oh, okay. So, did I pick the one with the the four horsemen? No. Oh, that's pestilence. Dang it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I go taco. Yeah.